Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. In this one, I'm going to be talking about building effective loadouts for the early to mid game, up until level 15 to 20 when you get Ragman level 2 and you're able to outfit your character with some decent protection and simple but effective loadouts. There's a lot of different options when it comes to gear like armor, helmets, bags, and tactical rigs in Tarkov, and it can be very confusing sorting through it all and trying to decipher what's the best or most cost effective piece of armor. This video will be the start of a two part series about early game loadouts, starting with the armor and equipment available during the early and mid game, and then in the next video talking about what kind of weapons, ammo, and meds that you can pack along with it so you can defend yourself and heal effectively. I'm not going to go over every single piece of equipment available because that would take too much time and defeat the purpose of the video. Instead, I'll be looking at the best items available from the level 1 and 2 traders and pointing out why I feel that they're effective choices. So without delaying it too much in the intro, let's start off by taking a look at the bare bones selection you'll have from Ragman between levels 1 and 14 before you upgrade upgrade him to level 2 and get to the good stuff. To start this off, we'll be looking at Ragman level 1, and the basic armor and equipment items that he sells. The stock at level 1 is fairly limited, but there's some effective items here that are worth the purchase if you have the cash to spare for some protection. First up, the only armor you can purchase from Ragman at the beginning is the Packa Vest, for about 28,000 rubles. This armor is not something that you should depend on to stop rifle rounds, but it can and will save you from being one-tapped by shotguns to the torso, and it will stop some of the basic pistol rounds as well. It's not amazing, and I wouldn't buy it if you're really low on funds, but if you have some extra cash, it's not a bad idea to pick one of these up to save you from scavs and other players with shotguns. Plus, it's a low value item, so you should get it back from insurance almost every time. The other armor option from level 1 Ragman is a barter trade for the 6B5 armored rig, requiring 3 soap and 4 rolls of toilet paper. These items are common enough that you should be able to find them for the trade, and this is a decent piece of armor for the early and mid game. It's class 4, which means it can stand up to some rifle rounds, and it comes with space for mags and supplies since it's an armored rig. However, you can't really get it all the time because of the barter trade requirements, so this won't be your main source of armor. Next up, Ragman level 1 sells the SSH steel helmet for about 21,000 rubles, and regardless of how cheesy it looks, this is actually a very good piece of protection. It's class 3 armor, which means it'll block most pistol rounds and some rifle rounds, but the real winner here is the high ricochet chance, which means sometimes rounds will just bounce right off of it. I use this helmet from level 1 pretty much right up until level 30 when Ragman 3 gets unlocked, and you can start buying class 4 helmets at a good price. It looks a bit silly, but it offers a surprising amount of protection. The other helmet worth looking at is the 6B47 helmet, which can be traded for 2 bottles of bleach at Ragman level 1, or purchased from Ragman level 2 for about 30,000 rubles. This one has similar stats to the steel helmet, but also covers your ears and has a mount for night vision if you want to use that. It offers a bit more protection, but it also reduces your hearing slightly so you may want to wear an active headset along with this helmet. It's not a massive upgrade to the steel pot helmet, but it does offer more coverage and is a bit more low profile so it sticks out less, making it worth the trade or the extra 10 K to purchase. While we're on the topic of helmets, make sure that you avoid purchasing the coal pack helmet sold by Ragman. It might seem like a cheap alternative, but it's borderline useless and severely reduces your hearing, so it's generally just not worth the space on your head. Next up for your armor and helmet choices in the early game, at level 10 you can unlock Peacekeeper level 2, as long as you can meet the money spent requirement for him. This gets you access to a lot of weapon attachments, but he also sells a few armor pieces that are worth checking out. To start with, he'll sell you both pieces of the UN armor set, the vest and helmet, both of which are class 3 armor. These things kind of stick out because they're bright blue, and do have some other drawbacks like high speed penalties for the armor. However, the armor vest in particular is not a bad choice in the early game when your options are limited, since it's class 3 armor which can help against some basic rifle rounds. You'll also need to wear this armor set for several quest objectives, so it's worth pointing it out. Personally, at around $400 for the vest and $200 for the helmet, I do think it's a bit overpriced, but at level 10 you don't have a lot of other options. The other armor pieces sold by Peacekeeper level 2 is the MSA TC2001 helmet for about $450, which is actually a really good helmet for the price, and is the first piece of class 4 head armor that you're able to buy. This helmet doesn't protect the ears, but it covers the rest of the head with class 4 armor. It has low durability, but it can stop some rounds that would otherwise just kill you, and the price is about on par with other class 4 helmets that you unlock later. This helmet can also mount night vision, and it's my favorite helmet for doing mid-game night vision runs. Thank you. 
Next up, we have Ragman level 2, who can be unlocked at level 15 if you get his quest done and meet the money spent requirements. This is where your armor choices really start to open up, but there's a few options here that are particularly worth using, and he sells arguably the best mid-game armored rig, which we'll talk about first. The armor in question here is the 6B3TM armored rig, sold for around 48,000 rubles, giving you class 4 protection and a good amount of space for mags, grenades, and medkits. This rig pretty much does it all. It has a good armor class, it's made of good material so it repairs fairly well, it has good rig space, and is quite bulky to loot, meaning you almost always get it returned through insurance. From about level 15 to level 30, this is pretty much the best piece of armor that you can buy from the traders for cash, and you'll see me wearing it most of the time until I hit the point where I can afford to blow money on class 5 armor vests later in the game. Other good choices at Ragman level 2 are the 6B5 armored rig and the 6B23 body armor. The 6B5 rig is only class 3 armor, so it's lower protection than the 6B3, but it has double the durability points, which means it can soak up more damage from low tier ammo before it's broken. It's about the same price too, and it's worth trying out, especially if you're just hunting scavs and not looking for a lot of PvP. The 6B23 body armor is about 43,000 rubles, and like the 6B5 rig, it has better durability than the 6B3 but also a lower armor class. Personally, I prefer to stick with the 6B3 rig because of the higher protection, but this one is a good choice if you want to run a large tactical rig like the Triton or Alpha over your body armor for more space for looting. For helmets at level 2 Ragman, the 6B47 helmet mentioned earlier is a pretty good choice for 30,000 rubles, offering all around class 3 protection and a high ricochet chance. The other helmet unlocked at Ragman level 2 that I use quite a lot in the mid game is the Kiver helmet, along with its face shield. The helmet itself is around 33,000 rubles, with the face shield bringing the total price up to 60,000. At lower levels, having a face shield with the Kiver helmet is a real advantage, and it makes you nearly unkillable by pistols, shotguns, and some SMGs. Plus, it can tank some of the really low tier rifle rounds as well. Not everyone loves running face shields, but I find them very useful on close range maps in the early game. The other helmets sold by Ragman level 2, like the Sphera helmet and LZSH, are a bit too expensive for what they offer in the early game, so I wouldn't really recommend using them. The LZSH has a use later on when you can buy face shields for it, but until then, I think you're better off just running the Steel Pot, 6B47, and Kiver helmets. Of course, once you hit level 10 you can use the flea market to search for armor and helmets, but this is kind of a tricky move since a lot of players sell almost completely destroyed armor here, and the prices can be quite high on a lot of them when you factor in the repair costs. However, in the early game, one armor stands out on the flea market above the rest, and that's the Zhuk 3A press armor, which can usually be found for quite cheap at around 30 to 40,000 rubles. It's only class 3 armor, but it can be repaired very well for extremely cheap meaning that it can last you a long time and it doesn't cost much to repair. This one is a great vest to use between levels 10 and 15 when you unlock Ragman level 2, and I use it quite frequently, especially if I can find it on dead scavs. Other options to search for on the flea market are the Karasa vest and the 6B13 armor since they drop from scavs, but the price is often high and the durability quite low, so be careful that you don't get ripped off by a cheeky flea market seller. If you're somehow independently wealthy by level 10, you can use the market to buy high tier armor like the Tac Tech, Killa Vest, Slick Armor, and the new Fort Defender. But most players won't be there, so I'm not going to spend a bunch of time covering these in this video. Now that I've covered most of the armor and helmet options available from levels 1 to 15, I want to quickly go over the tactical rigs and backpacks that you have available in the early game, to point out the best options available and what to avoid. First up, we'll start with backpacks since it's pretty simple. Bigger is better, and you only have about 3 real options in the early game for good backpacks. The MBSS backpack is the bare minimum I would recommend taking into raids. You can easily trade one hard drive to Peacekeeper or two dog tags to Ragman for one of these backpacks, and if you have the flea market, you can often find these things selling for dirt cheap. The next upgrade from this is the Scav Backpack, which can be purchased from Ragman level 2 starting at level 15, or you can now craft two of these bad boys at the lavatory level 1 in the hideout using one fleece and one ripstop. These fabrics are easy enough to find that you should be able to craft these and give yourself a nice edge on looting in the early game. The Burkut Backpack, sold by Ragman level 2, is basically a Scav Backpack with better camouflage, and that's it. I like it because it doesn't stick out quite as much, but it's effectively identical and you can save yourself 5,000 rubles by just sticking with the scav backpack. Finally, at Ragman level 2, you can make a barter trade for the Trizip backpack in exchange for 4 ES lamps. This is actually a really solid trade and can get you a big backpack for looting runs out of some easily farmable ES lamps. 
When it comes to tactical rigs, again your options are kind of limited in the early game to what you can buy from Ragman or pick up from dead players and scavs. The bank robber rig at Ragman level 1 is a great option for only about 9,000 rubles. It doesn't have a ton of space, but enough for 3 mags and some meds, which is much better than a scav vest. At Ragman level 2, you unlock a bunch of new rigs, but by the time you reach level 15 you should probably be checking the flea market instead, because they're generally much cheaper. For example, a triton rig from Ragman level 2 is a around 30,000 rubles, but on the flea market you're looking at 20,000 or less on most days since they're a common scav drop. The same goes for other tech rigs like the war tech rig and scout sniper rig from ragman level 2, they're almost always cheaper on the flea market because scavs drop them and players sell them back. The micro rig at ragman level 2 is pretty solid though, especially for low gear looting runs because you can stick a 4 slot item like a clock or power supply into its big pouch. My recommendations for early game tack rigs is to buy the bank robber until level 10 and then start buying tritons or mk3 rigs on the flea market for a good price to gain extra space. For the most part though, once I hit level 15 I'm running the 6b3 or other armored rigs, which already come with mag slots and don't require an extra tactical rig, which saves money and inventory space in the long run. For this next section, I want to quickly go over the main types of active headphones that you can find in the early game, and also why you would want to wear them in the first place. These headphones quite simply allow you to hear better by increasing the volume of sounds that players and scavs make and increasing the range at which you can hear those sounds. This makes headphones extremely useful on large maps like Shoreline and Woods, so you can hear people coming through the trees before you can see them. Some players dislike the active headphones, and those who use them all have a different preference for which is best, so it's kind of a complicated topic. In the early game though, the first headphones you can get are the GSSH headphones, sold by Ragman Level 1 for 12,000 rubles or 2 packs of paper. Personally, I don't love how these ones sound, but they're cheap and they can be pretty helpful in the early game. The next ones you unlock are the Peltor Comtax, sold by Ragman Level 2 for 25,000 rubles or 6 packs of matches. These headphones have a much better sound profile and I find them extremely useful to help detect enemies when I start doing geared runs. The other headset you'll run into a lot throughout the entire game is the Tactical Sport headset worn by Scavs. I think this one has a very crisp sound to it and really helps with hearing range, so I generally try and take them off Scavs to use in my own raids. I recommend trying some raids with a headset if you haven't already because you'll be surprised how far you can hear with these things equipped, though they do take some getting used do. That pretty much covers it for my thoughts and recommendations for early game armor and gear. There's definitely an interesting array of options right now, and the more crafting recipes they add for armor and gear, the more diverse the early game will become in terms of equipment selection. I was originally intending to include a bunch of weapon builds in this video as well, but I've decided to split this into two parts, the first covering early game equipment, and the second taking a look at weapons, ammo, and meds that are most useful in the early to mid game. I hope you found the video useful and got some insight into some of the more effective pieces of equipment for the early game. And and some that you should avoid. I'll be streaming more Escape from Tarkov on Twitch, and if you want to catch a raid sometime, there's a link to that down in the description. You can also find links to my Twitter and Discord server, along with a link to my Patreon page for anyone interested in supporting the channel so I can make more content. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below, and until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.